everybody, my name is Eric Hopkins and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're finding me for the very first time, please hit that like and subscribe button. Any help you can give me is greatly appreciated. And I just, want, I just want to say a quick thank you to all those who watched my Indianapolis Colts video yesterday in regards to the possibility of Julio Jones being traded from the Atlanta Falcons to the Colts uh, yesterday because that video did so well. I ended up getting 30 plus subscribers in one day's time on my channel. So thank you very, very much for all those who watched and subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please, by all means, do so. I want to grow the audience on this channel and continue to do videos for you going forward. But today I want to discuss a little bit of news that came out yesterday about Star Wars Celebration has finally got a new date. And it was originally, this comes to us from StarWars.com itself actually, it was originally slated to be in August of 2020, 2022, I, I apologize, uh, To but it's now been moved up a few months to May 26th through the 29th in 2022. This is great news because obviously with the pandemic, we did not get a Star Wars celebration. Uh, it was either supposed to be this year or maybe even in 2020. But either way, they had to postpone it due to the pandemic. So it's good to see that we are finally going to be getting another one. Now, obviously, Star Wars recently, as of last year, I believe, came out and said a lot of their future plans. So what could they possibly have to discuss at Star Wars Celebration 2022? Well, that is still exactly a year away. And by then, we're going to have a lot more Star Wars content that's going to be coming out over the next year. And then hopefully by then, we'll have even more room to announce new things, maybe new movies, and maybe new TV shows and stuff they're working on for Disney+. Plus. But I thought it would be fun to kind of, on top of the news for Star Wars Celebration, to show you a little bit what Star Wars plans are as of right now their current slate their release slate going forward plus all the things they've got planned for disney plus so let's check this out here this is my uh so this is all my Star Wars stuff that I have saved on my hard drive at home. And I wanted to kind of walk through the timeline here and show you some of the new stuff that is coming out from Star Wars. Uh, we start off, obviously, in the timeline with the new Acolyte show that is coming to Disney+. Plus. That's going to be centered around a female Sith at the end of the time of the High Republic. That's about all we really know about this show at this point. Uh, but I think taking the idea of a Sith, obviously, is something new. Uh, and obviously, granted, a lot of the movies you know, center around a Sith when it comes to Darth Vader. But this is going to be a Sith and maybe learning a little bit more about the lore and things that go in behind the Sith mythology. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with that. And obviously in the timeline, did you did, then you had the episode one and two of the prequels and then the Clone Wars series, which I highly recommend to people who have not seen the Clone Wars because it does a very good job of fleshing out the story between episodes two and three and making the prequels better as a whole. So if you've not checked that out, the storytelling is very good. The animation is a little clunky at first because they were just getting started at Lucasfilm Animation with some of this stuff. But now they've fine-tuned it and it's, it's 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 an amazing animation style that they're using now it's almost it almost rivals anything disney or pixar would do in terms of quality uh, so then of course we have episode three that's interspliced with the finale of clone wars and right now on disney plus we have the bad batch the bad batch is currently about two episodes in with the third episode releasing on friday and it takes place immediately after the clone wars and uh, episode three in the new age of the imperial era uh, where the empire and palpatine has uh, taken over and of course we we have characters from the Clone Wars who were trying to deal with you know the ever-changing landscape and where they're going to fit in with this galaxy so I think it's got a lot of potential it's off to a good start so I highly recommend checking that out as well and then of course in the timeline we got Solo a Star Wars Story which some people didn't really care for but I think it's a, it's a rather underrated Star Wars film it just came out at a bad time a few weeks after Avengers Infinity War and a lot of people didn't really give it a, a, a chance I don't think and if they did uh, some people just couldn't see anybody else playing Harrison Ford's character of Han Solo uh, but I thought Alden Ehrenreich did a very good job. And, of course, you know, Donald Glover, uh, yeah, he, he did a good job with that as well, playing the young Lando. Uh, and, of course, speaking of Lando, uh, I, the, the Lando series technically does not have a, you know, it, much information about where it's going to take place in the timeline. But my assumption is that it is going to take place immediately after Solo, A Star Wars Story. And we're going to get a little more backstory into Lando leading up into Episode Five with Cloud City. And some of his escapades that he goes through as well. I expect Donald Glover to probably re-sign to do this show. Uh, if they haven't re-signed him yet, that's kind of silly to announce the show and not have that in the bag. Uh, but it could also be with Billy D. Williams. Now, great, Billy D. Williams is getting a little older. But if nothing else, I kind of expect him maybe to come back for this show with uh, maybe some voiceover work and things like that. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. We'll see what they do with that. And maybe we'll get maybe a little bit of a solo sequel in regards to this, which I know they were planning on doing, but then they kind of backed off after it didn't do so well. So I'd still like to maybe see solo uh, 
2 or maybe, you know, some stuck stuff about Crimson Dawn and things like that that they tease at the end of the solo film, maybe played off in uh, maybe a Disney Plus series itself. So we'll see what happens. But then we got the big one uh, coming out next year in 2022 on Disney Plus, And that is the Obi-Wan Kenobi series starring Ewan McGregor and, of course, uh, Hayden Christensen returning as Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader uh, from the prequels. They're going to be coming back uh, all these years later and they're going to, you know, talk about, you know, do the story with uh, Obi-Wan in the desert, probably watching over Luke. And I, I still think I want them to cover the whole idea of the conversation that Luke had with Darth Vader and Revenge, or Return of the Jedi. Uh, it was originally called Revenge of the Jedi back in the day, but they changed it to Return, uh, where Luke is talking about how there's still good in you. I felt it. You know, and Vader said, Obi-Wan, what's thought as you do? You don't know the power of the dark side. And so I want to see, when did Obi-Wan once think like Luke did? I think this series right here could be where Obi-Wan confronts Vader and obviously finds out that he is now machine, more machine now than man, twisted and evil. How would he have known that in episode four? or episode six when he said it actually, if he had not had another encounter with him after the events that took place on Mustafar. You could say he felt it through the force, sure. But it sounds to me like they had another encounter before episode four and Obi Wan's untimely demise on the Death Star. And I think we're going to get that here, and I definitely hope that is the case. Uh moving on, we have obviously Star Wars Rebels, another great series if you've not checked it out, much like the Clone Wars, enhanced this time frame with uh, great storytelling and the introduction of Grand Admiral Thrawn which I believe we are going to see more of in live action as it was teased last year in the Mandalorian season two, that he will be showing up in the live action Mandalorian uh, stuff going on with the crossover shows they're going to get to. And I'm going to get into here in a minute. Then we're going to have uh, Andor, the prequel series with Cassian Andor, the character from Rogue One, a Star Wars story here, getting his own backstory about how he came into the rebellion. Maybe some of his more dirtier missions that he had to go on early on that uh, before he met Jen or so. Uh, so we're going to get a backstory. Hopefully we're going to see him meet up with uh, K2SO as well, even though I, I think it's been confirmed that in season one, K2SO will not be in this series. But hopefully by season two, maybe they'll kind of, kind of do an adaptation of the comic book where they uh, showed how they met. Uh, the Bad Batch has already kind of done a little bit of that sort of thing where they take a comic book storyline and kind of tweak it a little bit and put it into live action or animation to where we actually get to see that story play out. And they've kind of done a little bit of that in The Mandalorian as well when it comes to Cobb Vanth and some of the Aftermath books as well, where it seems like the TV shows and the movies are the top level of canon. And I know, I know they always said that everything's going to be connected after the Disney purchase, but they're starting to do this thing where Disney, where TV and movies trump all. And if you see anything in a book and a comic that contradicts the stuff in the movies and TV, the movies and TV went out. So, And then, of course, after Andor, we had the Rogue One, a Star Wars story, which is a great lead in to the original trilogy of Episode 4, 5, and 6 with our, you know, the classic trilogy with all of our main heroes with Han, Luke, and Leia that obviously everyone love and adore for the most part. And then, of course, we've got the great series of The Mandalorian. Seasons 1 and 2 are now out on Disney+. Plus. Season 2, in my opinion, was better than Season 1. Uh, and we got some Clone Wars characters that made their debuts in live action. So if you've not seen the Clone Wars and you've uh, watched The Mandalorian Season 2 and want to know more about Bo-Katan, Ahsoka, and a few others that showed up in that in that series, definitely go back and check out the Clone Wars. There's a lot of backstory, especially it, also with the Boba Fett character that uh, kind of fleshes out his character arc after uh, the death of Jango in Episode 2. So definitely I recommend that t as well. And since the uh, after uh, ep Season 2 of The Mandalorian... Where they tease the the book of Boba Fett, which will be coming out in December of 2021. Boba Fett is back. He did not die uh, at the Sarlacc pit in uh, Episode Six: The Return of the Jedi. At the beginning of that film, uh, he survived as the aftermath books hit it at, and uh, Cobb Vant got his uh, armor, and Boba Fett has uh, now reclaimed it after Season Two of The Mandalorian. And now we're Boba Fett is going to get his own TV series. It's probably going to be like a one season miniseries because they originally wanted to do Boba Fett as a film. Film. But again, after Solo, a Star Wars story, I think they kind of adjusted their plans and went TV series, which has worked tremendously for them at this point with The Mandalorian and some of the animated stuff they do. So I think that's going to work out great for Star Wars content. Keep it on TV right now uh, as you try to figure out what you're going to do on the film side of things. Uh, and obviously these two shows, The Mandalorian and Boba Fett, are going to tie into Rangers of the New Republic and Ahsoka. 
Uh, obviously, Ahsoka made her live action debut after the Clone Wars animated show in The Mandalorian Season 2, uh, played by Rosario Dawson. I thought she did a great job of adapting that character. These three films, or these three shows, Boba Fett, Rangers of the New Republic, and Ahsoka, are going to be intertwined with The Mandalorian, and they're going to eventually do this Marvel Cinematic thing where they come together in this great crossover event to uh, be a grand finale of this story. So I'm interested to see what they do there. I kind of wonder if they're going to adapt... Uh, the Thrawn novels, but from back in the old EU days, I don't know if that means we're going to get like Han, Leia, and Luke. You know, still they're still around in this time. They're younger. They probably have to be recast. But never say never. We've obviously got a Thrawn mention already in the Mandalorian season two, so it does appear that that's where they're going to be going. And maybe Thrawn is going to be the big bad they've got to take over, and that's going to uh, lead us into the gap between uh, the. Th- at the end of this, it's about five years after the return of the Jedi show where these four shows take place. And obviously then there's going to be about another 25 year gap uh, here in between Ahsoka and episode seven. So we get into the sequels that a lot of people don't really care for. I think a lot of people do kind of like uh, episode seven. It's got a little bit of a nostalgia trip there, uh, but then eight and nine were not really, uh, I think, I think eight was pretty well critically uh, loved, but audiences sometimes didn't take to it. And, of course, Episode Nine. some people didn't feel like it was a proper conclusion. Again, I'm not one to really dislike the uh, the, the sequels. I think the sequels are actually a lot better uh, than some people give them credit for. But I, I, I think it could – people tend to forget, too. A lot of people forget how – that a lot of people did not like the prequels when they came out. And over time – People have uh, grown to like them and have a bit of an affinity for them even. And I think the Clone Wars have, have done a good job of fleshing those out uh, so to where it, it, it does make more sense narratively and things like that. So I wonder if Star Wars and maybe Lucasfilm Animation are going to do some uh, work here and maybe try to flesh out and explain some of the stuff that the films didn't have a time to do, kind of like the creation of Snoke and obviously you know the return of Palpatine. I think the Mandalorian has already hinted at possibly going that route uh, as well so now granted there is a, another animated series uh the uh star wars resistance it's intertwined with the sequels a little bit here uh so that's why it's not shown here but i didn't really care for it as much as uh clone wars and rebels and the bad batch is off to a good start so but it, i mean it's a little more slapsticky humor uh more for kids but it's still a good show that only ran for two two seasons so definitely check it out as well and of course we got the lego holiday special which is not the holiday special that was on tv that lasted uh, all but maybe one showing on TV and all those years ago. And uh, obviously, George Lucas didn't want to see the light of day anymore, and for good reason. Uh, but uh, yeah, so check out the holiday special on Disney Plus as well that they did, I think, last year. Uh, after that, we have Rogue One, a, uh, uh, I don't know if it's going to be called a Star Wars story or not, but it's a, it's going, it's Rogue One, uh, or Rogue Squadron, I should say, I, my apologies. Uh, it's going to be directed by Patty Jenkins of Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984. Uh, she directed those two films, the less we say about 84, the better. It wasn't the greatest. But uh, I think that, you know, being, I think she mentioned that her father was a fighter pilot, I believe is what she said in the, the, in the video they released when they announced this. So I think that she could have a natural for it and uh, we'll see what she does uh, this movie right now has I believe a 2023 release date in December so it's still a few years away and it gives time for Star Wars to figure out what they want to do with their Marvel or with their uh, uh, movie side of things uh, so before we uh, get that played out in theaters it stands the reason that they're going to take their time and develop th- things properly and go on TV in the meantime also we've got a movie coming from Taika Waititi in the Star Wars universe. Taika Waititi is the director of Thor Ragnarok and Thor Love and Thunder. So if you like those Thor movies, uh, which Thor Love and Thunder ain't out yet, it'll be out next year. But if you like Ragnarok, you might kind of get an idea where he's maybe taking the Star Wars movie. I don't know if his type of humor is... Now, granted, he did direct a uh, episode or two of The Mandalorian, and I thought he did a good job with those. And the humor in that fit pretty well with Star Wars. So we'll see what he does. Some of his humor you wouldn't necessarily consider to be like in the Star Wars vein and its style. Uh, but if he does well with uh, The Mandalorian show, I have faith that he'll do well in this. He's a good, talented director, so we'll see what he does. Also, a couple other shows that are coming out. The Star Wars, a droid story with C-3PO and R2-D2. Uh, I think it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be animated. Don't don't quote me on that, but it's supposed to be coming out on Disney Plus sometime in the near future. No release date for that as well. And then of course, Star Wars Visions is an anime adaptation of some of the classic Star Wars stories. I think uh, coming to Disney Plus in 2021. Uh, at least I think it's adapting old stories. It could be new stories, but I think they're going to take some of the classic uh, you know, Star Wars storylines and adapt them to anime. So that is pretty much. 
everything that is coming up from Star Wars here in the near future uh, within the next couple of years. So by the time Celebration rolls around, we'll probably have uh, some more of this stuff within the next year. We're going to have uh, Obi-Wan, Andor, Boba, Book of Boba Fett, maybe another season of Mandalorian. Uh, and visions, and we'll probably be leading up for Rangers of the New Republic and Ahsoka by the time, uh, and obviously we'll have another season of the Bad Batch as well. But we'll be, you know, getting all that stuff, you know, probably by the time you know Celebration comes out next year. So they'll have room to hopefully announce new things coming down the pipeline here, and uh, we'll see where they go. I'm looking forward to it. I'm a big Star Wars fan, been that way ever since I was a kid, since I was born in 1981. Obviously, the Star Wars films, you know, the first uh, episode four and five were out before I was even born, and I grew up with these films, and I love them, and they're they're my one of my favorite franchises in the world so uh i can't wait to see what they do and what they have going forward but what do you guys think are you excited about everything that star wars has coming forward are you happy that celebration is coming back to anaheim in 2022 and is going to be coming out a few months uh, earlier than expected in may of that year uh, comment down below hit hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all the notifications about when i put up new content on my channel and until my next video guys take care